astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to tonight's live stream via Gozo in the House for a short heads up on the forthcoming full moon in Gemini, which we have coming up this week on the 8th of December. So what I want to ask you first is how actually are you feeling in these few days that are going to unfold leading up to this full moon? Because I think this weekend the energy has been quite extraordinary, quite jagged, which I think might be something to do with the fact that retrograde Mars is actually conjunct this full moon in Gemini. Now, why do I say that? Well, retrograde Mars, Mars in Gemini is not very comfortable. Mars is about action. It's about energy. Um, it certainly doesn't want to slow down and think. And of course, what's happening with Mars in Gemini is that it's being encouraged to think. So maybe you have to look in your own lives to see where you are being encouraged to slow down, to think, to observe. Now with this full moon energy, we have to look at also what's taking place in the opposite sign, which of course is where the sun is, because the sun is in Sagittarius. Now Sagittarius is very much about education, higher learning and truth. This can also be about our own kind of education, higher learning and truth. So these are some of the energies we're dealing with. Now, Gemini, where the full moon is, we would say, okay, Gemini, it's about communication, it's about thinking, it's about perhaps a little bit of travel, it's about a little bit of sort of short distance kind of communication, but, because this full moon is conjunct Mars, it makes it a bit tricky. So first of all, I want to say on a sort of mundane level that we really do need to be mindful of taking care of ourselves with respect to transport and journeys. So be mindful when you're driving, if you drive. Be mindful when you're just moving around because Mars can kind of jar things. It, it has a suddenness about it. So just try and be aware of that energy. Otherwise it can cause, you know, Mars can actually cause um, damage and cuts and things like that. It's not a good planet to have in a bad aspect, for example, if one is thinking about surgery. One would have to kind of be aware of that. So that's just on the mundane level, but what are the aspects that are helping or hindering this particular full moon? Well, let's have a look because what we have actually is Jupiter is in Pisces and Jupiter and Neptune are widely conjunct. So let me just explain about Jupiter and Neptune. Jupiter expands. Jupiter can also be about opportunity and luck. Neptune is about the numinous. It's about just kind of anything that um, is beyond our kind of comprehension. It can be misunderstandings. On a more practical level, it can literally be viruses and infections. It can also be anything to do with vaccines and medicine. So these two, these two planets walking hand in hand are actually making a hard square to Mars and the Moon in Gemini. Now, Neptune turned direct today because we're recording this on the 4th of December. And the full moon does not actually go full until the 8th. And Neptune and Jupiter conjunct like this. And as Neptune is going direct, it brings a kind of surge of energy. 
on one level, on a more energetic level, it would be as if we start to see things more clearly. Because Neptune has been retrograde since about the end of June, and it can tend to cloud our thoughts, make it more difficult to see clearly what is right for us. So that energy has been around. The other thing is that, of course, Pisces, where Neptune and Jupiter are, is a water sign. Pisces has no boundaries. Jupiter expands water. Neptune is water and it's a full moon and it's conjunct Mars squaring, which is challenging, Jupiter and Neptune. Now I know because I've seen the news that for instance Sicily, which is the large island off the toe of Italy, which is just north of where I live in Gozo, has been experiencing some terrible floods in the last 24 hours, as has Ischia, which is a small island off Italy. They've had landslides and they've done a mass evacuation because of the incredibly bad weather. Now, because of the energy of the moon, because the moon pulls on the planet gravitationally. We know this because the moon affects the tides of the oceans and the seas. So we know that the moon affects us. We know um, that women, for instance, have a 28 day monthly cycle. This is governed by the moon, which has a 28 day cycle around the earth. So the moon does gravitationally affect the planet. Now think back to that full moon total lunar eclipse we had a month ago on the 8th of November. That full moon in Taurus was conjunct Uranus, the planet of shocks, earthquakes, the unexpected, volcanic eruptions. What have we seen since then? And this energy can actually last for up to six months, but we've seen earthquakes. We even had a small one here in Gozo, which I'm sure some of you will have felt if you're here watching from Gozo, or will have heard us or seen us report on our Facebook pages. Um, there's been a volcano that's erupted in Hawaii, and there's been volcanic action in Indonesia, in Java, east of Java. And they also had an earthquake soon after that full moon total lunar eclipse. And then the energy was really crunching and pulling at those tectonic plates. Now, I'm not a scientist. So, um, you know, I, 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 I'm intuiting what I feel from what I understand about the astrology, about also the symbolic kind of effect that these planets, these cosmic bodies, have on the earth and on us. So this full moon is not a full moon that is just going to come and go. I wonder if you've all been feeling a little bit kind of like, whoa, what's this energy? This is all a bit heavy. This is all a bit kind of like, what's going to happen next? It's, it's, you might have found that you've, you've been kind of overthinking a lot. You might find, if you haven't already, that, 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 that your anxiety levels have been kind of raised, that you're kind of on alert, that you're very aware and conscious of the energy of rooms and collections of people, and maybe certain people in particular. There's a lot of kind of what I'd call really sharp Mars jagged energy with this full moon. Now the good news is of course once this full moon actually kind of bursts forth I think it will feel like a release. I think it will feel like a relief that we've moved through what is quite a kind of tricky energy and hopefully taken the the opportunities of both Venus and Mercury that are conjunct 
in Sagittarius, Venus is in Sagittarius, Mercury is in an outer sign conjunction in Capricorn, but they are nevertheless conjunct. Now Mercury is our planet of communication. Venus is our planet of relationship, amongst other things, and self-worth, self-value. And they are also in wide opposition to the full moon. So this gives us a little bit more information about what we can expect from this full moon energy, because really what it's saying is we need to have faith in our truth, in our authentic self. We have to have faith that, um, that we do know about, we know that we do know how to walk our talk. Because there may have been or be something about this energy which kind of sends us off balance. We just get a little bit out of sync. As if like, whoa, you know, it actually feels like, you know, the earth is moving again. Like when we had our earthquake a couple of weeks ago. And there's something about, and I think, and, and I know a, a very good friend of mine who is actually in Goza at the moment. Annie Conboy is, is I'm hopefully, I'm asking her to do a podcast about earth energy and how that operates with us psychically and psychologically because it's as if we've all been a little bit off balance and it literally can feel as if the earth is still moving and of course energetically when you when you're in an area like we are here and I know this is very local to Gozo but when you're in an area that has energetically had some earth movement, that doesn't just settle down. It doesn't, doesn't just happen and stop. It happens and there are gonna be little kind of vibrations and movements that are so imperceptible and just not gonna be picked up probably by delicate scientific equipment. But what does pick it up is us our psyches, our soul, our energetic being, our aura. And we feel kind of um, really knocked off course by this kind of energy. So this full moon, once we've got through the energy that is building over the next three to four days, I do feel it's going to be a little bit like when an abscess bursts. And once that poison comes out, whatever the nature of the particular poison in your life, once that poison comes out, the pain goes and the healing can begin. And interestingly, Chiron, that is known as the wounded healer, is making a lovely harmonious aspect, a trine, a helpful aspect to the sun, to the light. This is about healing. So the fact that Chiron, our wounded healer asteroid, is pointing towards the sun, it's like saying the sun is our life force. It's without it, we can't, we won't exist. Can we kind of, it's almost like you can see why the, the ancients worshipped the sun god. Because yeah, without it, nothing grew. We didn't live. We died. So the symbolism of this is what I'm really getting at. That healing can come through facing the truth. Whether that's the truth between you and another or you and a group. But maybe it's also the truth between you and you. Because sometimes that is the most difficult relationship that we can have. That relationship where we really discover who we truly are and how we relate to ourselves. Before I finish this short heads up, Saturn, our planet of containment and restriction, 
in Aquarius is still making a very nice harmonious aspect to the full moon which consequently means that's Mars as well so the full moon conjunct Mars has this wonderful containing healing energy from Saturn what Saturn is saying is this is a thing of time Whatever it is that's unfolding in your life at the moment, give it time. Give yourself time. Don't rush. Don't want it all done and all done now. You know, good things take time. There's seasons, the cycles. Saturn is trying to slow us all down. Whereas Mars retrograde is really revving that accelerator it's like a car that's not moving it's revving it trying to get moving in gemini and pull away from the moon and it's just not succeeding saturn is saying whoa cool it it's about timing because when we get back in touch with that flow and as i've often said when we get out of our mind we get out of our own way which is a little bit about what this Mars conjunct the full moon is about. When we get out of our own way and let the divine flow through us, then the magic happens because we're not in our way to stop the universe guiding us, directing us, showing us how we're supposed to respond to situations, to respond to ourselves. So there we go. This is my short heads up video for the full moon in Gemini on December the 8th. And if you would like to see the fuller, longer version, it is on my YouTube channel. And in that version, you get each sign is time stamped in the description box. So you can check out your sun sign and your rising sign to see what area of your chart this particular full moon is going to affect most. And I just want to say a special thank you to, um, to three people, or maybe four actually. I had two beautiful guardian angels, um, spiritual bodyguards in a situation that I had over the weekend that was challenging and I had lovely protection from these two wonderful spiritual bodyguards. You know who you are ladies, thank you very much. And um, and I also, um, I've done a couple of, of, of talks this weekend and the second was um, with, with a lovely um, medium chap called Sean McGough who's recently moved to Gozo and um, he's a really lovely guy. And if you come across him, if you're local to Gozo, uh, check him out. He's great. So um, on that note, I want to say also thank you so much to Gozo in the house for, as usual, hosting this full moon heads up live event. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye for now.